Hey, this time the quick speed shop, check it out! I'm assembling the box on my 80 Dodge. Look how tall it is! This thing's a monster truck. Let's take a look. Here we go. Let's, we're going to start putting it together right now. Came out here in the junkyard. The first step to resurrection the box is to get the box. I've got the sides here. Oh boy. And I see their original paint. The fenders are completely hashed. This one is completely, look how thin that is. It's like paper thin, rotted away. But the sides are intact and most original paint and pretty straight-ish. There is some issues on the back. But let's go ahead and dig them out. I'm gonna just use the zip wheel, saw the fenders off. Both these fenders are junk. Look at this, you can see, look at the daylight. They turned into Swiss cheese. But look at this, bam! New fenders in stock. New, new. These are out of the junkyard off a late 70s uh, county truck. And they're, I mean, they're fenders. What I did do is over here, out of another junkyard, I pulled a Dodge Prospector short box bedside, somebody to run over the box with the loader. And it's really a shame because these things are a fortune now, but I've got a good box side here, short box that I'm saving. And that's the fender off it there, which is in really nice shape. It's got the Prospector decal on it and stuff like that. I'm gonna save that fender because it's nicer. So we're gonna dig these out, the sides, cut the fenders off. It's got the running boards on it. You can see they rot. I have other parts for running boards, but they're uh, they're extremely hard to find and rusty because the way there's wood blocks that they mount to. I did order a set of new old stock ones on the internet, but I haven't seen it come through yet. So I don't know if it's a scam or it's actually a deal. I don't know. Some of them sites have popped up that looks at dealer inventory. So hopefully that comes through. We'll see. Uh oh, things are happening now. I got my box side in here. <clears throat> I took the running board off too after I cut the action off. Man, these are rougher than I thought they were, but guess what? Ah, it's what it is. Oh man. <sighs> Whoa. So I think I can just kind of like set this on some jack stands for now. Oh, holy moly. I want to get a look at what we got working here. Oh, seems to be way up in the air. Hmm. Got some cab protection here because I don't want to ruin the paint on my cab. Not, even, whoa, whoa. Not exactly sure where this guy shakes out right now. According to the wheel well, how big is the gap between the cab and the that's probably about right. Look at that. Bam. So, a little backstory on these boxes. I think Dodge came out with these in 1953 or so. Like the when they went to, no, it must have been earlier than that. The pilot house Dodge trucks, I think they started doing these. What were they, 48 or something like that? Anyways, this this ripple design, they had an earlier stake pocket on it, not just a straight thing. It was more sculpted back in the 40s. And then these, this wheel well like this, in the 50s, in the, well, the early pilot houses, they just had a little fender that bolted on here and covered up the tire. And then they ran this all the way through up to the end of the run, but they put the bigger fenders on. But originally this was your original wheel well here. And they just left it in. And this guy, as you can see, is an eight footer. This truck's an eight foot box. And it has, um, the thing I never really liked about these trucks is the, these boxes are so tall. They kind of like don't fit the cab the best, but all the, all the, truck companies are doing that back in the day. Ford had the mix match 
boxes they ran in the early 60s on the fridge trucks and uh you know, Dodge had these boxes. Studebaker, when they went to the Lark pickup, they used, I think they bought boxes from Ford that, like, didn't fit at all. And they were like, yeah, it's close enough. And so uh, it's just how it was back in the day of uh, truck production. When trucks were work trucks, they weren't, you know, status symbols like they are today. So I ordered a new front panel from this and two new old stock running boards, like I said, outside from that dealership website thingamajig and hopefully that goes through. I still haven't seen the email, but um, I measured the tailgate and I think these boxes are about 55 inches wide. And I need to know that because I need to build all new inner structure and I need it to be the right width to be able to put the new panel on and have the new front panel fit. So hopefully it's a weekend now. So hopefully maybe tomorrow I'll get an email from the dealership that says, hey, we're shipping your stuff. That way I know you know, what to do here if I get the new front panel, I can, you know, use that to get an accurate description of the width of the thing. But how do I, can I bungee, whoa, can I bungee cord this? Come here, so I can let go of it for a second. Whoa, careful. Seems like a good way to get everything trashed. What can this hook to? Right there. All right. Whoop, 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 whoop. No, doesn't like that. Um, whoa, easy. Too much. Man. Nope. Whoa, easy. Easy. Anyways, if I had one more that I could reach, I could put one in the front. It's a chance of reaching it. Well, well hold on to this. This is how things get wrecked. Ah, dang it. Whoa, need some kind of reaching device. What can I lasso it with? Ooh, maybe. Hold on a minute. Reaching. Come here. Ah, ah, come here. No, almost. This would be like a good, uh, what do you call it, game at the fair. Whoa. <laughs> there we go. Ah, yes. Now. Can we do here? The top of the bed rail goes like way up here. So I got this, I've got this low. I'm super nervous about scratching my cab, but this has got to go up some. How am I going to do this? More. More. One more. Super nervous. This guy is going to be way up in the air because here's where the bed floor boards were. See how this panel's welded on and uh, the boards would bolt, I guess, on top of that. Here you bolt through that. But the bottom of this has got to be two and a half inches from the top of the frame. And right now it's only probably an inch above the frame. So the back's got to come up like another two inches. So you can see here. It's below the kick up. That's got to be up above the frame. And the same thing in the front. It's got to be four inches to the bottom of that. The, the front's probably closer to where it's got to be on the cab. But I mean, we're already, we're already, like, here's me for scale. We're already up almost to my chin on the back of the box. This sucker is going to be way up in the air. I didn't realize it without the box on it, but the truck's got quite a rake going down in the front. And uh, holy moly. So that means, yeah, look, the bottom of the fender is going to be there. The There's going to be, this thing's going to look, you know, like it's got a big lift on it, which four inches doesn't seem that much. That's what she said. All right, so I did some looking on the internet, and I also brought in the tailgate to verify. Here's the tailgate over here. 
And it is a little worse for wear. It's got some damage here I gotta fix. I might end up cutting this whole bottom tube off and welding a new, making a new one out of heavy wall tubing because it's bent and rusted through here. There was a third hinge here that's gone. And it's twisted up, and but it's mostly there. It's got a little uh, whoop to it. But I measured it and I got about 54 and a half width wise. I went on the internet and found out the answers. 54 inches is the inside of the bed width. So what I think I can do now that I'm confident with that, the new front panel will fit 54. I'm going to make start making cross members and getting the angle iron ready to go on here and make it uh, 54 inches. Okay, I got my thinking steel out here. And what I think I want to do, and it's going to be a little overkill, but I think the front of the box and the rear of the box, I want to use this steel for my cross members. Originally, they had like a piece of U-channel down and then a sheet metal brace, but I'm going to go a little heavier duty just to stiffen it up a little bit. Um, I've got this one and a half by four C-channel. It's probably three sixteenths or maybe even a little heavier than that. And I've got to, I'll cut that to the 54. I'll take a piece of angle iron, like two by two angle iron, and that'll weld to the top of that and come out and frame out the outside edge of the floor of the bed. And then, you know, this surface here is what will bolt through the bed sides and that'll be our connection. So this will come here and there'll be a piece across the front, which will tie into the front panel of the bed. But I'll weld this to the, uh, top of this structure here and I'll probably to lighten it up a little bit I'll probably take and I'll cut this at an angle in here take a little chunk out of there and stuff but I want the main front and rear one um, to be heavier duty I had to go about four just over four inches tall to get this to just a clear minimal clearance to the top of the frame it's just got a little whisker under there in the back, the frame is kicked up on these, so it's like two and three quarters, or just over two and three quarters from the bottom to the top of the frame here. And the cross members are, you know, narrower, obviously, because of that, or the, the gap. But what I'm going to do in the back is take another one of these big ones, and I'll C-notch it down, and I'll cut a notch into it and weld a new uh, plate into it here, so it'll sink down over the frame. And these are, these are too long right now. They're like 60 inches long. So I'll cut the front one to 54. The rear one I'm going to leave long because the way the box is damaged and rattle rotted out with the rear, the rear uh, uh, with stake pocket, I'm going to leave it long sticking out here so I can incorporate a new stake pocket into the rear cross member. And I think that's why they rusted away. I think that was bolted together and it would just fill up with dirt and rot away. I think that's what happened with it originally. So we're going to do the same thing, and so I'm going to take another one of those and notch it, and it'll fit down over the frame, you know, to the four inches and come out here, and then I'll tie it into those stake pockets that way somehow. But, so that'll be the first thing to do is cut these, get them bolted to the frame front and rear, and then this actually here, this one by 2 uh, C-channel, it's like 11 gauge, it's like eighth inch, that's going to be the rest of my cross members across the front. There's going to be one here where the cab mount is, or the box mount is here. I have another one here. I haven't figured out what I'm going to do in the middle. I might just make something that kind of floats in between the frame or on top of the frame. I'm not sure what in the middle yet, but it'll, it'll have some kind of middle bar support. And then the original, the second mount back here, there was a hole here in this rusted away part that I replaced. So the hole will either go here or maybe here where it's... The frame is still flat because I think I, yeah, I got fuel tank issues there. I can't put it right there because that Ram Charger tank. So it's got to be back here and sit on this piece right here to clear that plastic hump in the tank. So we'll have another mount here. So I'll have a big mount, a mount, some kind of center mount. There'll be five cross members all together. All right, so next night I did a little uh, cutting with the cutoff wheel off camera and we got the rear cross member ready to tack together. Check it out. So I cut out those notches here and I've kind of replicated kind of like a factory look. I don't have the original rear cross member to look at but I've seen pictures and they do have like a step. It's more wider over here I guess but I'm going to do this custom like this. You'll notice the frame is sticking out of the back of the cross member about five-eighths of an inch and I couldn't 
get this thing to work out, when I slid this all the way out to the edge of the frame, it left like a two inch gap between the cab and the, where the front of the box is gonna be, you know, a pretty wide gap. And then I, I wasn't sure what was up with that, so I looked down the pictures on the internet, and that, from what I could see of trucks with an eight foot step side, the frame does stick out the back of the step side a little, just a little bit, for whatever reason down here. I think the tailgate mounts to the outside of this, so when you have the tailgate on, it's like flush down here. And when, if you have a, like a stylized rear bumper, it hides all that, but for now it's gonna show. And, um, but it'll give me a nice, so I, so I bent up my steel plates to go into the, low, the back cab bolt here. I've got a half inch bolt and I made these out of three inch flat stock. And now I'm just gonna weld all the way around, weld this back in and then I'll have a weld seam out here. I've got a, I see a big gap here. I gotta tap that up just a little bit, but essentially you're gonna make a three inch wide saddle welded right into this to bolt, bolt to the rear of the frame. That'll be our rear mount. And then, like I said, the box sides will come down here and I'll attach the uh, side of the, what do you call it, the stake pockets will come down and tie into this on the edge. I like using cardboard to protect the gas tank from explosions. That seems, you know, I'll use something flammable will work out great. So here we go. Hopefully it won't explode. Should it? But you never know. Okay, I did a little bit of welding here. I welded up the uh, steel pieces here, front and back, all in there, and I've got this piece bolted down. I've marked the center, so we got a good center point to go. And I've also made the front cross member. We'll look at that, but this thing is true. I measured. We got squareness going on with our two uh, front and rear main braces. This guy here, I went and I trimmed off the bottom corner here that's just not needed, and got it bolted on, and marked the center as well on there. So. Um, it's too late. It's too late for me now to do some tonight, but tomorrow I'll cut the uh, the two by two angle iron. We'll string that out across here and get an idea of what's going on, and we can start figuring out where the other cross members are going to go. Okay, I got the two pieces of angle iron cut out here for the bed, and I've got them tacked on. They're exactly eight foot from one end to the other, and they're 54 inches wide, so they're when our uh, side panels go on, we'll be at 54 for the width of the box and the, the wood floor will sit on this angle iron. Now I'm just trying to figure out where to put side, the middle cross members here. And I think I'm gonna go with five. This will be the first one. Um, the front of the box here is gonna get another piece of angle iron to finish that off. We'll do that later. So I think I am gonna use the factory holes here, like that one there. And we'll put a cross member across here. And then I've marked this, these wheel wells in this box side roll in about two, two and a half inches. I gotta figure out exactly what's going on with that. So this angle iron is gonna get cut out because it's only gonna go so far, I think to about here, well, actually right here. And then it's gonna have to jog in to go for that wheel well. Okay, got it. I got the cross members, the second and fourth, fifth or fourth one tacked in right here. 
just like I said, that one by two channel. And this is where right here is the mark where it's gonna get cut for the wheel well. So I'll have to tie it in somewhere. The rear one I set right up on the cut mark here. Got that tacked in. So now I'm thinking about mounts. I think what I'm gonna do is have the front mount, the next mount here on this hole, and then whatever, wherever this one fits in here, it's just gonna have a foot that sits on the frame. This one back here, I'm gonna take a piece, bend up a piece of flat stock or angle iron or something, come off here, come down and I don't think I need a bolt here either. I think if I have six bolts, four here, and then two in the back, it should be fine. Or I could drill it and bolt it here so there's eight. I mean, I I don't know if that's necessary. Yeah, I might do it. Anyways, so these guys are locked in. This one will get in once I cut this and move this in because I'm not sure how wide it's got to be. So I'm working on the mount here, and I've cut this simple piece of two-inch angle iron, and I've got these spacers. Oh, I had two of them. Where's the other one? It's gone. Hold on. It's gone forever now. Dang it. Oh, it was on the floor. So I got these punched out spacers. I don't know what they're for, something with a carriage bolt. But anyways, a half inch bolt will fit through them. And I'm just gonna weld on there and then weld this to here. And that'll make a foot that sits right at the right shape right to the uh, frame on both sides. And then like I said, back here, let's See, it's it's on an angle, so it's not quite a 90, but I can I can smush a piece of angle iron. I'll just I'll just weld cut a cut a frame width piece and just weld her up on, and then you know could put a bolt or not. Eh, maybe I will. Just never have too many bolts hold stuff together, I guess. Tell you what is worse than nothing is having a hole in the thumb of your welding gloves. Every time you grab something hot, you burn your thumb. That's fantastic. So uh, there we go. I got that both welded on. This one I did kind of fasten it on the time lapse, and it's a little bougie, but it'll clean up. I forgot to grind the galvanize off, so it was all smoky white. But I got the other one on. It's a little bit better on the other side. It took a little bit more time off the time lapse, and and did it, and got the welder pushed around where I could see. But these will be two nice mounts here. Nice and strong to mount this down to the frame, so it'll be locked in good. Oh, update on my new old stock Dodge parts I was talking about in the beginning of the video. Thumbs down! I went on my credit card and the, the sale's been voided out. So apparently it was one of those like weird websites that somebody created that goes and looks at stuff that's no longer available. So they canceled it right out. So I got no front panel and no running boards. So we're going to have to build a front panel, which is not the end of the, end of the, uh, what do you call it, end of the, uh, what I'm trying to say, end of the world, because um, I just make like a piece of tubing for the top and, and bottom or whatever and sheet metal, maybe I'll do a bead roll to kind of match the original one or whatever. So we'll kick something like that out in front here. I have two sets of running boards. They're both severely rotted, so I don't know what we'll do with running boards, but that's a, a battle for another day. You just saw in the last clip I was grinding the old sides of the floor of the bed off. So we got both sides cleaned up now. And I went and I cut the where the wheel tubs go in this. So, you know, right now this is separate, obviously. And it's got four bolts holding the front down and four, four bolts holding the back. I put my feet on here, like I said, I made them out of angle iron. I was in the process of welding everything up permanently. And I ran out of... And I ran out of MIG wire, so is what it is. So we're going to go over here on the box sides and put them together. So here is where that sheet metal was spot welded on. You can see I've got some pinholes and stuff. I think what I'm going to have to do is clean this up the best I can. I'm going to use a rust converter and stuff on this. I was going to try to sandblast it, but I'm going to waste all my sand 
because I don't have a big enough compressor volume anymore. But right now, let's try to bolt these box sides on and uh, see if we can temporarily assemble it. I bent up a piece of conduit here um, just to make a temporary piece across the front at 54 in inches. It'll bolt across the, the top of the um, where the front would go just to hold it together so we can fab hold that together. Ah. Why is everything so heavy? Whoa. I forgot the back tires are off. I forgot the back tires are off the ground. It's, it's rolling away on me. Shoot. Uh, crap. Whoa, yikes. Hold on a minute. Come here. Ow. There we go. Hold on. That'll go up there. There we go. Well, jack stand action. Oh, easy. Oh no, what's going on here? What am I looking at? I'm in a minor interference issue here. Am I looking in the front? I might have to trim. Oh, I might have to trim that piece of angle iron just a hair. How am I looking here? Oh, nope. Oh, the box has got to go ahead like a half inch. And why are we holding up here? Oh, it'll go. There we go. To there, maybe. piece of metal that's bojang on me here. I wish I had some pliers. Where this wheel tub is, after I get this in place, I'll put a new piece of angle iron. It'll step it, step it in, step it in like that and that'll attach, attach there. I just gotta, I'll have to box around the corners for the tub here, but we'll step her in like that and go cross member, cross member the cross member. Okay, I finally trimmed it enough to fit, and I really had to notch into here um, like an inch or so to get to work, but it works. So I've got this side on, and I've leveled it out. It's um, like 20 and a half inches from here to there, and it's the same on the front. And so I went and I clamped it, and it took me on and off a few times to get it, but I got it and I clamped it. Now I've drilled it, and I put two bolts in, one in the front and one there. And you can see what I mean by, you know, in this where that was spot welded here, I can put a piece of flat stock down, drill through the flat stock. Oh, well, there's a raised bump there. That's part of the fender thing. There's one there too. Anyways, um, so we're going to bolt through that body line to bolt it to the angle iron. But man, this thing is way, 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 way up in the air. Look how far that is. And I, I can see something here now. The box is, I'm pretty sure where it's got to be from the cabin here, but the wheel well, the tires are back almost two and a half inches in the wheel tub because this is the old wheel well from the old uh, 40s and 50s power wagons. So the wheelbase is different on these newer trucks, but it's the same box side. And you can see just where the fender is. I'm going to go outside and get one of the fenders, but... Um, you know, you can see how much the fender is back. So they just covered all, covered the misalignment up by moving the fenders back on the box. Originally, these boxes had like a sheet metal fender that bolted in here and just came out on the old power wagons there. And then they, you know, they put these fenders on in the, in the 50s, these big fenders. So I'm really confident it's where it's got to be. I just don't want to get too far down the road and then go put the fenders on and realize that the wheel well doesn't line up, so for the fender wells don't line up. So I'll get a fender out it's late night tonight. I'll get a fender out tomorrow and just hold it up and check it. And then I'll put the other side on, drill that. Okay, it's the next day. I went to the tractor supply store and got some more MIG wires so I can continue welding the framework. But let's take a look. I just kind of stuck the tailgate on here to get a look-see. Wow, crap. 
this this tailgate is really monkeyed. It's all cracked and fatigued and broke here, and it's twisted and wonky. It rotted out, so that's going to take a ton of fixing. But I just want to see how tall it was. It's tall. It's tall. So I'm going to work on. Uh, I just wanted to make sure. Oh, oh, that's what I want to do. I want to bring a fender up. Let me go get a fender, and we'll take a look. Okay, I got a fender. I pulled these out of a junkyard. They're off a mid-70s two-wheel drive truck. And as you can see, all the bolt holes are rotted off the edge. That's great, they're straight-ish. But we can approximate what it's gonna look like. Okay. I'm glad I did this because something is wrong. No, no it's not. Hold on a minute. It's not wrong. I mean, ah, misspoke. That's where it goes. That's where it goes. I really wish I had bolt holes to bolt hold this on here, but yeah, okay. I don't know if you guys can see down here on the tires. All right, it's going to work out. Oh, the tire is a little more forward in the wheel well than it is in the back. That's how these boxes fit. So that's that's good. You know, you'd have to drag the box ahead even farther to make it fit, but that's that's how they fit from the factory is not real good. So these are the best fenders I have besides a real nice one I think I want to save. So uh, we're stuck with what we got to work with, but that's the look. Man, look at that fender, the tire gap. It's way up in the air. Lifted trucks roll. And, uh, bam! I'm almost thinking maybe since I cut the fender off, uh, with the cutoff wheel, I've got this lip that's obviously still got bolt holes in it. I wonder if that's going to help me out. I can at least use it to, uh, Oh, it's only, it stops back here. Oh, that's just the fender was missing. But I might be able to reuse this and graft it in, or it's a pattern, because you can see on these fenders, obviously, they just took some flat stock and they made a bracket and bolted them like a couple of spots to the truck bed. That was their solution. Man, this one's kind of wrinkled up. Perfect patina. I love it. I don't think I'm going to leave them green. I think I'm going to rattle can them flat black. Or should I leave them green? I don't know. I'm on the fence. We're gonna have to think on that. I know what the comments are gonna say, but I don't know what I wanna do yet. Hmm, I kinda like them green and brown. I can always paint them black later, take them off and paint them black later. That's a thought, that's a thought. Because once they're painted, they're painted, but if they're not painted, they can be painted. Let me think on this. All right, it's many hours later because I had to work on my F-250 outside in the driveway, but I've got the passenger side box on and it's it's looking good. Everything appears to look line up good. I measured up and down. I got the same thing going. It's like within just about an eighth of an inch of being parallel with the cab, which I could adjust if I want to a little bit, but it, I've got it measured the same to the box here so the frame could be a little wonky or a truck just to be how it's sitting, but whatever, it's close enough. And uh, I got a couple of bolts drilled in here to hold this up. I ended up, I went on a search for the front of the box. I made this piece of conduit just to hold the thing together so I could, you know, not have it try to tip over so much. And I went on a real long search in the dark to try to find the front panel. But I must have scrapped it. I, I saw, I watched my video where I disassembled the box. The bottom of it was rotted. And I want to remember. I want to say that the tube across the top must have also been rotted too somewhat. So I, I must have scrapped it because I can't find it. But anyways, we'll make a new one. We'll put a bar across and an angle iron and make a new one there. But this guy is uh, really coming in, looking here good. Um, let's see. Maybe we can hang the tailgate on it just to get a look at that. Let's see, I got to get rid of this. The, now the tailgate is, is also wonky, but maybe we can just kind of get it up on here to take a look-see. Uh, this is all, it's all wrinkled where it's got to go.
Everything is heavy. We got here. Whoa. Look at that. Bam. How are we looking? Well, would you look at that now? Oh, easy. Obviously, it will, it's hanging a little bit low because it's just sitting on the chains. It's got to go up to center these pieces up here, but that'll, uh, yeah, it's actually centered up on my center mark. There was a third hinge on this that was completely rotted away and gone. And this tube on the bottom of the tailgate's all rotted through here and the tailgate's ripped and split. I'm going to end up, this is like one inch tubing or sheet metal actually. I'm going to end up cutting this off and welding a piece of one inch eighth wall tubing here to reinforce the bottom of this. Um, I'll probably make up some kind of homemade hinge to go in here for the center. And then I got to, I, I don't know. I think they might've been rotted out. I can't find the, uh, the pivot points to go on there for that, but they'll, they're just smaller tubing that goes inside. So I can make those two, but that is the height. Look at the height of this thing. Yikes. Like the tailgate's like chin high, bro. I mean, this thing is so tall in the back. This truck's got a wicked rake and we can figure that out with technology. Check this out. Let's take the Klein, uh, inclinator here. And we'll just pick a spot. Boom. What do we got here? 2.4 degrees down. What's it over here? Because it's supposed to be like 2.6. 2.7. Okay. 2.6, 2.7. So we got one heck of a front end rake on this truck. But that is the same as, if I can get it in here. Uh, I can't now because it's tailgate, but... I checked this before I did this and I did it on the framework of the truck, the frame of the truck versus the framework and it was 2.6, 2.7. So the box is mounted correctly to the, it's not like it's skewed, you know, this way. It's not, you know, crooked or nothing. It is the same angle as the frame of the truck, 2.6, 2.7 there. So the box is mounted correctly on here. It's just, it's just this tall because this truck with the lift kit, I mean, you can see the tire to the wheel well. And I added a little bit of lift down there when I made my blocks. It's like, it's up in the air. So as you can see, like even the hitch to the ground I measured, I'm gonna need about an eight inch drop receiver to mount to my trailer if, if I wanna keep it the same height as my other trucks. So I'm gonna have to get a, a real drop or maybe one of them adjustable receivers for it or, you know, hitch hitches for it. Um, I wanna do something to cover up all this under here, this gas tank and everything. Uh, you know, if you had a bumper on that, it would cover most of it up. So I'm gonna build some kind of bumper. I might make a cover that goes in here. I don't wanna just like see into the frame and the fuel tank, but um, you know, a, a, a big bumper on the back of this would have covered all this up, like a step bumper or a, something like that. So I, I haven't figured out what I wanna do for a rear bumper yet, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. But I think for now, that's probably about it. This is, uh, I've been working on this for a few days and I'm not sure I lost track of time for the video. So uh, I'm gonna probably call it good here with this video. We got the basic idea of the box going together and it's uh, one step closer to getting this Dodge done. That's it guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to leave a comment, subscribe, do all the things and we'll see you next time. Working on monster trucks, I guess, here at the Quick Speed Shop.